What is up my friends, how's it going? And welcome back to the fifth episode of our Morian campaign with your fellow comrade, Summary. In the previous episode, uh, we did manage to take out Bactra with our two armies, uh, namely Sena 2 and Sena 1. We have kind of merged our army in Sena 1 and I am pretty happy with the army composition. However, as I did mention, I will be making a few minor adjustments to this army composition and incorporating some chariots and artillery to this army. Pretty much what I will be doing is I will actually disband two of our cavalry units when I can and replace them uh, with a field artillery and uh, a chariot uni uh, unit each. So, yeah. Uh, one more thing I'd like to do is I'd like to apologize for the audio quality of my second video in this series. And the reason being, as most of you know, I have invested in a high-end mic. In fact, it is one of the best mics in uh, currently in the market. And uh, in doing so, I actually did not know how to fully uh, configure it for the best uh, performance. And uh, there is a particular feature known as the noise gate which pretty much acts as a noise cancelling uh, uh, noise cancelling feature that cancels all the background noise. However, this feature was set to a very aggressive uh, mode, which is why it actually clipped out a lot of my own audio. However, I have adjusted it, and as you can see in the third and fourth video, the audio quality has improved, and uh, it's a work in progress, so it might improve further. And... Uh, Believe me when I say this, I'm doing the best I can to give you guys uh, the absolute best. And that does uh, include uh, investing heavily in good equipment. Enough waffling for now, let's have a quick look at our entire empire. We go to the strategic overview. As you can see, we started out only with Pura and uh, Orea. However, we did march north and take out Frada, after which we took out Atrakoana, which is the capital of Hariva. We then moved eastwards to take Capucine, Eucritidea, and in the last episode, Bactria. So we now own two provinces in total. Uh, and we are going to go ahead and just build up Bactria. I'm going to go and build some temples in order to boost that conversion to Hinduism. And with that done, I think I am ready to kind of march my armies out towards Marakanda in order to take the city. Meanwhile, our spy up here in the north is busy collecting food and I'm not going to interrupt him. I would, however, like to move him over here. To see what's going on in Bukhara, as per my last piece of intel, there is a full stack of Bactrians up there in the city. So they might decide to actually come out, all three of them, and meet me here in the field uh, during the end turn. And we will have to wait and see if that happens. Uh, in the meanwhile, I am going to march my second army down south. The plan is to move uh, towards Frada in order to build up the second army in a similar composition to this first army. Meanwhile, looking at the politics, things aren't looking that great, even though I did assassinate uh, the character that was giving us loyalty issues. I ended up with a character that also has a kind of a bad trait, thirst for power. And for most of you who have seen my boss foreign campaign, thirst for power is rated by me to be one of the worst traits you can possibly get apart from pacifist and uh, and due to that reason uh, being that your influence is always going to be the highest and thirst for power is actually a minus 10 if the political party's influence is lower than your ruling party's influence and that is always pretty much going to be the case so it is a flat out negative 10 modifier to your loyalty for the entirety of the campaign as you can see here we can't get rid of it however one of my characters over here can marry. And I'm going to wait and see what trait this person gets. And if uh, he does get a desirable trait, I am going to go ahead and reassassinate Radesh Sham 
over here and uh, hopefully deal with those issues of loyalty. Meanwhile, a quick look at our characters. We do have uh, a lot of gravitas in this character and really high stats. So I am also going to go ahead and try to improve some of the skills of my character. Keep in mind, this character, Radha Sham's cunning is at 4. So I need a character with a cunning of 6 in order to deal with him, in order to assassinate him. And it's pretty much going to be Dama. I'm not going to bother, as I said, upgrading her stats to a 10, 10, 10. Instead, I'm just going to use her gravitas up before she dies, as she is aged 50. And as such, I am going to level up all my other characters. Beginning with uh, Tara. Let's go ahead, improve the zeal of Tara. And then do her a favor, improving her authority. And as you can see, we are now at 847. Meanwhile, over here, we can send Dama on a vacation for her to get a bit more cunning. So she should return from the vacation with the cunning of 5. And then in the next turn, when we send her on another vacation, she should have a cunning of six, which means she can assassinate Radhe Sham. Hopefully, we get some positive trait in this fellow over here. He doesn't quite show what his traits are, and uh, that is due to the fact of uh, him just being recently uh, hired. Alright, so as far as Bactria is concerned, seems like everything is in order. Meanwhile... The public order situation in our empire is kind of uh, not ideal, I would say so, as is the food situation. One of the reasons our public order isn't so great is due to the fact that we have these Arabian pirates raiding our coastline out here in Orea. And due to that reason, as you can see, we do have a negative pen to public order from raiding. And if that didn't exist, then pretty much we have a plus five public order per turn in Markov. However, with that, I think I am ready to end the turn and I will see you all in the next turn. Alright, welcome back to the next turn. Mercenary con uh, contacts. You get a plus 45 factional mercenary replenishment. Not that great since we don't have any mercenaries. Meanwhile, our food situation is still pretty low. We can go ahead in Bactria and upgrade this uh, to a shrine of Vishnu Deva. Meanwhile, I had decided to march my army down south in order to build our second army up. However, seeing as I really can't, uh, I really can't uh, abandon Bactria as it has been recently conquered. I I have decided, however, to move this army back up north in order to temporarily uh, garrison the city. Meanwhile, our dignitary down at Atrakoana has leveled up, so I am going to go for the political zealot, which gives uh, plus six cultural conversion, so that's great. Apart from that, I am also going to get some more empire maintenance as our empire is slowly and steadily growing. I can get one more, however, I'm just going to quickly have a look at our Empire Maintenance and it is at minus 12, so I can get this one, although it does give me some negative public order, but nothing we can't deal with. As you can see, our Empire Maintenance has gone down a fair bit. Meanwhile, a quick look at politics, we can't quite see what this uh, character's trait is as of yet, so I'm not going to bother with the assassination for now, even if I did want to do it, or I could do it. I really don't have enough cunning to dispatch this character. <clears throat> going to go ahead, quickly praise Tara, give her some more uh, zeal, as well as I am going to do her a favor. Seems like I can't, so going to go ahead and do a favor for the other character and Zaz. And slowly and steadily we are improving the uh, attributes of our character. So I am going to go ahead 
and also send Dama on a vacation to improve her cunning. Apart from that, improving the uh, sending a character on the vacation also gives plus five gravitas, so that's great. Meanwhile, I am going to see our Patliputra nobles, see if I can improve the public order of any provinces that I have. So I'm going to quickly go ahead and do that by organizing games in Hariva. And we were gaining one public order per turn, but now we are gaining 11, so that's pretty good. Apart from that, I also want to resolve our food situation so our spy isn't kind of held down over here. And in order to do that, I do have one option in our politics, which is pretty much uh, to send one of our characters. I am going to send Hima to uh, as send emissary under the court intrigues to one of our provinces in order to get some food. Now usually over here you want to select the province with the maximum region because you get plus one food per region. So as you can see we currently have two food. If I send her to either Bactria or Maka which has three regions I get plus three food which will take it to five. However if I do send her to Atrokana which just has one region as the other two regions are controlled by the Parthians I will only get plus one food which will increase the overall to three. So quite obviously, I'm going to go ahead and do it for Maka. And as you can see, we are at about plus five. I guess you get an extra one being the capital like this. And since our food is under control, I am going to move my spy further out. Seems like that huge Bactrian stack has actually been kind of demolished by the Parthians. So I guess I have uh, full freedom of movement in this region. What I am going to do is I am going to move my army somewhere over there in the middle. And from there I can possibly attack uh, from the sides. So I'm going to move him onto the middle. Just make sure that I am not within range of the city. Alright, like so. And perfect. And in the next turn we can pretty much choose which way we would like to attack. We can either attack Bukhara or Marakanda. Uh, probably would take out Bukhara first since I want to deny it to the Parthians. Bukhara has been recently conquered. The garrison is kind of depleted so I can technically fight the battle without taking any losses if I am extremely meticulous which I will try my best to be. My Lord. I'm gonna go ahead and so put this on stands to save some uh, upkeep cost as well as improve the public order over here. Dualism is growing at 1.4 per turn. Uh, Hellenism is currently at 42 so if we take it uh, like that we let's say we get uh, plus 20 or plus 15 to overtake Hellenism we'll need 10 turns to do so. However, that being said, I think we are done with this turn, so I'm going to end the turn, and I will see you all in the next turn. Alright, so as most of you can see, the Bactrians have decided to attack me during the end turn. They have used all of their armies in order to engage me. They total about 4,500, while we are at 3,200. However, I do believe we have uh, decent troops. In order to deal with the situation, they do have pikemen. Those can fairly pose a problem to our front line. However, if we defeat this army here with as little casualties as we can take, we can then push on to Marakanda in the next turn. So let's hop right into the battle. I'm gonna do a quick save right here. And I will see you guys all battle. Welcome to the battle. We are going to go right away and collect our entire army, bring them behind and quickly set up our army in our regular formation. Spearmen up in the front. Meanwhile, our archers right behind the spearmen. As you see, I do have a little bit of an OCD, so I do like to be a little bit neat with my 
army organization. And we can keep our infantry in reserve. Gonna go ahead and move him to the flanks. And I am going to do the same for the right flank. Select both our swordsmen, bring them a little bit forward. And with that, it seems like our reserves are fine. I am going to adjust my elephants over here in that ideal formation that I had mentioned earlier. And the same with the right flank, with the addition of our general. Right, there we go. And the cavalry to support the right flank. Let's go ahead, begin the battle. And the enemy should try to move up in order to meet us. So we are going to move our army towards them. And what we ideally want to do is try to defeat the enemy piece by piece instead of uh, entirely. So perhaps before their reinforcements can arrive, we should be able to try to rush down the smaller portions of the army. That being said, I am going to run my army into position to quickly engage. And it seems like my archers are in range, so I am going to stop right here. Make sure to turn on that guard mode for the archers. Select our archers, they don't have a lot of missile units, so I am going to select our archers to attack their phalangites. As phalangites are strong in a head-on attack, and uh, however they are weak to missile fire. As you can see, even the Bactrians have received an overhaul and they are looking quite good. One of the things I have done also for this overhaul is I have adjusted the unit cards for all the new units, as you can see. Uh, I'm really pleased with my work. And what cavalry do we have over here? Is it a javelin cavalry? Yes, it is. I am going to charge them. I'm not going to try to catch them. Just pretty much going to try to, yeah, to scare them off. And then I am going to change my focus onto this heavy shock cavalry take no losses at all whatsoever and then charge in with my actual cavalry meanwhile over here on the right flank as you can see they are charging some cavalry so I am going to dedicate an elephant unit for each cavalry meanwhile I am also going to move our melee troops into position and with that, they are now uh, slowly making their way towards the enemy. Meanwhile, over here on the right flank, things got a little bit uh, mixed up. So I am changing our assignments, moving our general to attack that unit while the other elephants can attack the other unit. Quick look at our left flank. We have routed out that cavalry. So we are going to attempt to again scare off this cavalry. Move our swordsmen a bit ahead all right over here on the right flank we are doing fairly well this cavalry looks to be pulling off so i'm going to use my own cavalry to chase and chasing down cavalry is quite effective as you can see we are getting a lot of kills because they aren't attacking us while we are attacking them the enemy general is dead all right so we have killed the enemy general Quickly gonna select this unit, hit the J key so that they turn around. Same with this unit over here, hit that J key. And I will turn around. Meanwhile our cavalry on the right flank can move about in order to attack. I want my archers to stop firing at the phalangite as they will take a lot of casualties from throwing the fire. I'm gonna go ahead and charge our infantry units to the back over here. Redirect our archers to hit that archer unit. And we also have managed to get rid of the enemy missile cavalry over there. And as you can see, our flanks have taken barely any damage. That's that's just perfect. And looking at our main line, as you can see, uh, Ampel Vamsika Sena are doing an incredible damage over here by attacking the enemy in the flank. I'm going to go ahead and try to attack that unit. 
cavalry over here on the right flank has kind of run into some melee troops, so I am going to pull them behind. Meanwhile, bring our cavalry on the left flank to kind of join the fighting. It seems safe enough for our macemen to, to go around the enemy. Meanwhile, our swordsmen over here have kind of I've kind of dealt with that unit, however they are getting rear charged by this phalanx unit so I am going to try to pull them out as quickly as possible. One of our units has used all its ammunition. And while things not looking so good for our general, he is uh, fighting against this unit that does have a bonus, 15 bonus, my god by elephant units so yeah <laughs> watch out for that are these the same units One of oh yeah units used all its ammunition. so gonna have to kind of watch out for my elephants over there pull out our general recharge our elephants i do want to get rid of that unit as quickly as i can meanwhile that narrow formation as most of you know is quite helpful use that narrow formation to maneuver our macemen around And there's some pikemen over here, so I'm going to pull my elephants out of there. Charge in our infantry. Get our general out. Already out, okay. Move up our macemen. Narrow formation, please. Go ahead, move up our narrow formation. I do want to hit these pike units. They are hurting our front line pretty bad. While we have broken this uh, this unit, we are going to charge the other unit. And with that, things are looking good. Go ahead, charge my two-handed macemen. Sorry, my warriors to the fray. And over here, we're going to quickly readjust our army. Uh, our elephants over here are being attacked by that sword unit that does some significant damage to elephant units. Two-handed macemen are in position to rear charge, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Quick look. And these guys can do some significant damage, they can really rack up the kills. Quick look, as you can see, already 24, 30 counting this unit has already begun to rout as a result of it okay things not looking good for our elephants over here we are going to try to rear charge meanwhile there are pikes over here i didn't see that so the elephants are going to go in and around them didn't take much casualties I have managed to route one more of their swords unit, moving our general back to the main front line. These macemen have done well, they have wiped out the enemy, so I'm going to pull them back and help our left flank. Used all its ammunition. Why are I? All right, it seems like our cavalry over here is engaged with that sword unit. It means we can attack them in the back with our other elephant units, and I am going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to reposition my general and charge into the rear of the units. Meanwhile, our macemen are also into position to attack this spike blob. gonna quickly move them around and charge them into that unit. 
And with that, we have won the battle. I am going to end the battle, because I don't want to completely wipe out the enemy army. I want them to be stationed outside Marakanda, so that I can easily conquer the settlement. However, that being said, it did take a fair bit of casualties in this battle, mainly due to the enemy pike units and that sword unit that is pretty much a counter to elephant units in my opinion. However, nothing we can't overcome and I will see you all in the campaign. Welcome back to the next turn. One of our characters wants to be adopted. Another family seeks to adopt one of your characters. I'm going to stop that adoption. Quite obviously. And before we hop right into the uh, campaign again, quickly going to summarize what happened during the end turn. Three Bactrian armies did uh, sally forth to meet me in battle. We have inflicted some casualties. And I'm uh, going to go ahead quickly get the trained swordsmen. But we have dealt with both of them, so we can technically uh, you know, attack this army outside Marakanda and pretty much siege down Marakanda fairly easily. Uh, in the meanwhile, the political situation has, or the political climate has kind of changed in Persia. Seems like the Parthians are slowly losing land to the Sadrakata, who we are at war with. I am and they are satrap of the Atropat can, so I can't really sue for peace Be unless I try to peace these suppose. guys out. Now speak as you I mean, I really do want to peace them out because they have taken over Susia, which means they can march towards Atrokoana. I'm pretty sure the garrison should not be at full strength, although it is, so we can deal with them. What I am going to do in response is I am going to also move my army further south I have a quick look at our politics summary yeah we do need one more city to get to the next imperium level after which we can hire another army that should be quite helpful we are going to put Bindusara in charge of that army as we don't really have any characters that can uh, that can fulfill the, the role of a general uh, as you'd like to know uh, I do use my family members as military generals, while I use my political party rival leaders as uh, governor generals. And the reason being is every battle you win gives you some influence and as a result uh, you can improve your influence. Meanwhile over here, this guy, Bahir Moria, uh, likes barbarians, so that is a positive trait. So I am going to go ahead. Quickly assassinate this character. And as you can see, our loyalty has improved. Great, so we now just have pretty much almost all positive traits over here. Great. We have Patriot for both of these guys. Okay. Quickly going to upgrade the settlement in uh, Eucharitidea. Have a look at our other settlements. Things are looking okay. However, this pirate fleet is kind of being a nuisance for us right now. Our taxes are on high. So I can lower them a bit in order to help with that public order situation. i very quickly steal some food from over here. Oh, meanwhile, it looks like the Parthians can take over Bukhara, so... I guess taking over Marakanda will have to wait. I don't want That's them to take over Bukhara. Uh, so I am going to have to dead take over Bukhara myself. My Lord. I could auto-resolve the battle. However, I'm not too happy with that auto-resolve uh, result at 88%. And I know that, you know, due to creative assembly, most of the casualties will be taken by my elephant unit. So I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to quickly hop into the battle. I don't think I really need to show how I will fight this battle. So I will see you all in the campaign once I am done with this battle. Alright, so welcome back to the campaign. And as you can see, we have taken out the garrison at Bukhara with minimum casualties, just 22. 
I can loot the settlement, however, I am just going to occupy it because I need some population in order to uh, replenish this army over here. So going to go ahead, occupy. My Lord. And as you can see, that does give us a slight bit of population, which means we can recruit a fair bit for the next turn. Hopefully this army decides to remain outside Marakanda because... Uh, it's going to be a, a lot easier to attack the garrison outside the walled settlement rather than on the inside. However, we will have to wait and see what they decide to do. Meanwhile, I am going to purpose uh, Bukhara. Can't really do much about this building. However, it is giving me four food. So I guess with that, I can actually increase the taxes over here. That's great. And also can do some politics to improve our character skills. Right. Okay. Yep, I am going to go ahead and praise Tara. Give her a little bit more zeal. Send this character again on a vacation. Well, I send one of these characters. No, I cannot. By the looks of it. This will kind of uh, reduce my growth rate. Or my replenishment rate. So I am actually going to switch off the taxation. Just for this turn. We are making a fair amount of ducats. 2,541 per turn, so... I'm pretty okay with that. While we still haven't hit our third Imperium by the looks of it. No, no, we have. We have, so that's great. Can hire Bindusara over here. Antri Wanpura. Okay, so that's what's going on. Due to all the assassination attempts, I have actually lost uh, my ministers. A quick look at which minister I can hire. I am going to go ahead and hire Gobaruva. Go reinstate that legacy. Put him in there. Yes, that should help with the public order a bit. And see what we can get in terms of household traits. Prove that public order. So that should kind of help counteract the piracy that's going on at Orea. However, with that, it looks like we can go ahead and end the turn. And I will see you all in the next turn. Alright, welcome back to the next turn. My agent has been discovered. Our army over here has not quite replenished at all in fact however they should do so in this turn i am quickly going to attack this factory and stack should be a hundred percent auto resolve that's always great gonna enslave those captives move our army back to bukhara meanwhile our army over here can slowly make its way towards atrikoana and also I can. It seems like Maka has kind of expanded, which is great. Uh, so, yeah, before I go ahead and do that, I am going to quickly look at my politics, see if I can perform any actions. I am just going to wait one more turn because I do want to get the final zeal on this character. And I can go ahead and praise the character as well. It should get the authority up to 9, that's great. Educate some of my children. I have all three at age 6, however I do believe Shema has gotten to age 6 first, so I'm going to prioritize him.
possibly the last thing I can do is kind of recruit another governor general. And for this governor general, I am actually going to hire him as a fleet instead. Keep in mind, I do prefer to have fleets as my governor generals, as fleets uh, free up a lot of army slots that would otherwise be occupied by your governor generals. So I am going to name him Mantri to Orea, which is identical to the name of this governor general. And the reason being is I am actually going to transfer this guy in the next couple of turns to Frada instead. Well, we can expand the city over here. And I'm actually contemplating what to exactly... What exactly do I want to build over there? Like, pretty much soon enough when we do conquer a bit more provinces, I am going to... Uh, I am going to repurpose the province of Maka into an economical province. It isn't one of the best economic provinces in game. For most of you who have seen my economic guide video, you would know that the uh, four best provinces, in my opinion, are Egyptos, Asia, uh, Latium, and Hellas. In my opinion, the best being Asia, followed very closely by Egyptos. Latium, especially if you're Roman, is also quite good. And Hellas if you're Hellenic. However, for the objective of this campaign, which I hadn't described it earlier, we are going to try to achieve a economic victory, in my opinion. We could also gain a cultural victory, that's a lot easier. So whichever comes first, we're going to go ahead and do that. However, for the early game objective up till turn 100, we are slowly going to snake our way up to the north. And we are going to take over Zwarism and Scythia. And the reason being is we want to convert these provinces into our culture. Uh, and the reason for that is so that we can get access to our reforms. So if we have a quick look. Now we do not have reform technology. The reforms will automatically fire. And we don't have to research any technology in order for them to fire. Well, I'm just going to move my spy back down towards Marakanda. Have a quick look at what exactly is going on over there. With that, we can go ahead and end the turn. Welcome back to the next turn. We have completed our research. And I do believe we want to do research in the military tree. So I am going to get the military development. We also have a food shortage. And in a spot of luck, the Bactrians have recruited a new army and it is outside their settlement. It is led by what I believe to be their new faction ruler. And so if we defeat this army, take over Marakanda, we should effectively wipe out the Bactrians. Which is our first major uh, victory against a major faction in the game. Meanwhile, over here... Ashoka has made his way down towards Atru the city of Atrukana. However, I am going to overshoot the city just a tad bit. So that I can hire some units. Alright, I'm actually going to wait till I can hire those units. I'm going to go ahead and research the ammunition supply chain for that extra ammunition. And over here, I've kind of decided I want to go ahead and build some farms. I could have technically upgraded our fishing port from 5 food to 10 food, which is correct. Good. However, we will get some public order issues due to that. So I have decided against it. Meanwhile, over here, Mantri 2 Orea can be renamed to Mantri 3 Prada. And we can go ahead and disband it and reinstate it in the next turn. However, I'm just going to go quickly into this battle and I will see you all in the battle. Just quick save over here and let's hop right into the battle. Alright, so welcome to the battle. We're going to begin our deployment. I'm going to go ahead and hide some trees. As you can see, you can just hold down the control and F key 
in order to hide the trees and that kind of helps with your deployment as you can see over here i can't really see units however right now i can that's always useful quickly assign our army groups and position our army as you can see these trees are not hidden however when you do you know approach closer to them they will be hidden Get our archers in behind. Get our melee units into position. We await your orders. Noble swordsman. Melee infantry at the ready. Perfect. Get our masemen slightly behind. And the reason I do this is I do not want the enemy missile units to attack my macemen as they don't have a shield and will take a lot of damage from missile uh, troops so definitely want to push them a little bit behind in order to make them uh, further out of reach from enemy missile units this battle however we will be fighting the garrison so it should be a fairly easy battle uh, and we're gonna go ahead and march our army into position I'm gonna fast forward while they get enemy into that position I do like to keep this advisor on during battle because he does make some pretty important announcements such as any enemy reinforcements and general dying. One thing we would like to accomplish in this battle is as usual take as low casualties as we can. However, apart from that, what we do also want to achieve is that we want to wipe out as many of these units as we can. So we are going to focus on routing the enemy army because if we manage to completely wipe them out, then that means the Siege of Marakanda is going to be all that more easier. Right, the enemy army is quickly getting into its formation. I am going to march our troops up ahead. Quick time. As these uh, small movements don't really impact the fatigue of our army really all that much all right make sure our archers are on guard mode we can slow down the battle now so that we can better micro our units. units use our archers to hit their archers quick look at their units they do have two shock cavalry which is actually good for us because you know the shock cavalry don't really stand a chance against uh, our own elephant units so we'll move out these units a little bit further to the flank charge in with our elephants have a look at this charge beautiful stuff meanwhile our cavalry can can get into charge as well. You can see they are starting to lose pretty decisively. And our cavalry hasn't taken any damage due, due to us using our elephants to break the enemy charge. Some of the archers of the enemies have started to rout. I'll use this elephant unit to charge. <coughs> Press the J key real quick and they should move back. After the charge, use our swordsmen to pin down this unit over here. Reassign our archers and focus on that general over there. Let's quickly move our ele elephants on the left flank into position. Our left flank troops look like they can get into the fighting fairly soon so I am gonna go ahead try to get them up and around meanwhile on the right flank everything is looking kind of stabilized so I can also go ahead and attack those guys on the right flank meanwhile I do want our horsemen to kind of try to attempt to wipe out the enemy army as much as possible our general is under attack move our general into position over there our elephant on the right flank as well over there 
And I look on the left flank a little bit further inside. Move our swordsmen in. Our macemen can move around. Meanwhile, our archers have done their job. Use these elephants to attack them over there. These elephants can go ahead and attack these units. The general can attack this unit. Alright. Okay. Wow, what is going on over here? I'm gonna move our macemen back and around. Quickly inspire with our general. Use our macemen to charge the rear of that enemy phalanx unit. <coughs> Sorry. Great. Seems like the enemy army is in almost in full retreat. Use our macemen to attack it over there. Gonna quickly continue the battle. The Try to kill as many of dead. the enemy troops as we can. And with that I think we can go ahead and pass forward. Elephants didn't really get a lot of uh, engagement time so they haven't done a lot of damage. I think I am almost done wiping out the enemy army so I am gonna end the turn and I will see you all in the campaign all right with that we have defeated a lot of the Bactrians there is however one unit of Bactrian archers however they should not pose any threat to our siege I'm gonna go ahead quickly and slave the captives And take over Marakanda. I am going to sack the settlement. 99%. I'm okay with that. Go ahead and loot the settlement. We got extra ducats. We are in having a bit of a food situation. So I am going to switch off the taxes. Yeah. However, it does seem that we still have a food situation. Even... If I do decide to switch off the taxes, so I uh, guess there isn't really much of a point to it. Yeah, we do get a further food situation if I do decide to turn off the taxes. Quickly going to repair the main building, demolish these two buildings. I want to build uh, some of those temples. We are, in the meanwhile, possibly going to get a rebellion over here. Get some further ammunition, that's always great. Do want to improve the ammunition as much as possible of our archers. They started out with 15 and currently they have 19 ammunition, which is great. And uh, yeah, I also want to get some of these temples over here. The other temple will be the Shrine of Saraswati. Gives us that research rate. Quick look at our other settlements. And also we are quickly going to look at our politics. We can get the final zeal for Tara. But last Tara is at 10. Authority wise she isn't however. But we can cancel the household trait over here. And give it to Tara instead. So that she has 11 authority by the next turn. I can use uh, our faction leader to improve the authority of this character, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Don't really have any good traits that I would like to select for this character. Meanwhile, I am going to use my political uh, 
abilities to improve the public order situation in Transoxiana. That's first. The second thing I'd like to do is kind of help improve my food situation over here in Marka. That has kindly, slightly helped with the food situation. Next thing I'd like to do is go ahead and build those five units of spearmen. I will only, however, be able to build three of them. So, I do want to prioritize building five of them, however. Because as you recollect, we are bordering the Sadrakata, who are at war with us. They are a satrapy of the Atropakan further out to the west. So, I do need to reinforce uh, Atrokoana. There we go. And although I did intend to march further up north, take out these nomadic provinces in order to spearhead our reforms as soon as turn 100 approaches, it seems like I am distracted a bit due to the situation that is unfolding in Parthava. And I will kind of have to rise to meet that occasion and uh, defeat these factions over here in order to secure my uh, in order to secure my western flank I could however play some politics try to establish a peace agreement with this faction and instead opt to take out the Parthians sooner the better because pretty much later on they get some pretty insane units however with that I think I can go ahead and end the video and thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're interested in more such videos. Peace and love.